I tried a total of 11 palettes in the month of May and I've been testing them. I've done multiple looks with each of these palettes, so I'm excited to rank them from the worst to best. Let's get straight into it. We're gonna start off with number 11, what I think to be the worst palette that I tried this month. And when I first review it, I really did try to justify it and say the quality was good. But at the end of the day, I will never, ever, ever, ever reach for this palette. And that is the Viseart Petits for Pastille palette. I think, you know, I was blinded by this adorable packaging with little macaroons on there. But at the end of the day, this color story, I find it very difficult to work with. I have not gotten a single look that I liked with this palette other than the one that did not involve the blue. The blue is kind of the standout here. I liked the quality of it. I thought it was very pretty, very easy to use. But the other colors I find just don't complement it. Every look I've done, I felt like if it involved the blue and the browns, it looked muddy. It just didn't look good. I didn't like it. So yeah, I mean, the quality on this is good. It's just an odd mishmash of colors, which makes me really not like this. This palette so because of my high expectations for Viseart and how excited I was and my level of disappointment is why this is ranking at number 11. Number 10 though I don't like simply because of the quality. I, I also had high expectations for this and it was so bad. So unfortunately that is going to be the Rare Beauty True to Myself eyeshadow palette. This is not new to the market. I picked it up because I filmed a full in-depth review of Rare Beauty and I hadn't tried this palette yet and I felt like since it was the only palette that they had that I needed to try it and boy uh, this is so bad okay so here's what the palette looks like I mean it's pretty safe colors you can't mess them up really but there's no depth in this palette the mattes are really really sheer I don't get much it takes a ton of building up these shimmers at the bottom here they're okay nothing special this is really chunky and why on earth would they make a pressed glitter front and center with the most amount of product because not only is this a pressed glitter whatever at least make it good if you're gonna put it in there but it's not even good it is chunky you can't it, uh, this is a mess a mess rare beauty creates such beautiful products but i could not get behind this eyeshadow palette i couldn't believe that this is the palette they decided to launch because i have their previous palettes from a couple years ago holiday season complete different formulation love those palettes they were bright they were pigmented they were stunning this gives me nothing i do not like this palette i'm a little angry about it i just Moving on. <laughs> Let's go on to number nine. This is the ColourPop Apricot Me Not palette. I've used this twice at this point, and I mean, okay, is it a bad palette? No, but it, it gives me a whole lot of nothing, I feel like. The mattes are weak. The shimmers don't adhere to my eyelid. You could definitely manipulate these shadows to make it work, to create a pretty look, but ColourPop has so many better palettes, okay? This is not the one that I'm gonna recommend you towards. These are the most basic colors that are in a billion other of their palettes, but those have better quality than these. I don't know what's up with the inconsistencies, but I wasn't moved by this color story to begin with. I just happened to grab for it. It was a newer item. I was like, okay, let me test this new palette out. And again, mattes were weak. Shimmers didn't adhere to my eyelids. I could make it work. I could build up the mattes. They would be fine. I could wet my brush and get the shimmers to adhere to the lid. In fact, I did do that for my makeup look for the day. My makeup look was not ugly, but ColourPop has so much better formulas in their other palettes that are the exact same color as these. So the math ain't mathin'. I don't recommend this one. This is not one of ColourPop's strongest launches. Number eight is another ColourPop palette, but I mean, the quality on this is so much better than the Apricot Me Not palette. I simply am putting this in the place that it's in because I do not like the color story. It's not something I'm gonna reach for very often. I think it's cute. I love the theme behind it, but just never gonna wear these colors. This is the ColourPop and Star Wars palette that came out. Yeah, I mean, I created two looks with this. One was a red and blue look. It was totally out of my comfort zone. It was a cool look, but would never leave the house in it. And the other look I did was with the browns. This is what I'm talking about where ColourPop can create better quality. This is so much better than the Apricot Me Not, but I'm also not gonna reach for this palette. This is my own personal rankings, so if I'm not gonna use it, I'm not gonna rank it high. But if you like the colors in here, you like Star Wars, you think you will use this, then I actually think you will really like this. I do recommend this. The packaging is everything, the quality is great, especially for the price point. Just not my kind of color story. Number seven, again, it's more of a color story issue as opposed to a quality issue. This is the Viseart Pettit Force in Pesh. It's a great palette, okay? The look 
that you can get with this. Super duper pretty, really cute, but again, Vizier has these colors in so many other of their palettes. I have this color story in so many ColourPop palettes. You know, they have this color story a thousand times over. I'm not blaming Vizier. You know what? They launched four different quads. It only made sense for them to come out with one that's peachy and that people were gonna wear, very summer friendly and wearable. But in my rankings, I'm not gonna reach for this one very often. The quality is great. I have nothing to bag on in terms of that. I'm simply like not inspired by the color story. The other ones that they came out with, you'll see later on in this video, you know I love them. So this one just like fell behind. We're getting into the good stuff now. Number six is the ColourPop, once again, Get In Fresh palette. This is the last ColourPop palette that I have to talk about today. I did a whole dedicated review and I liked the palette, but I was underwhelmed by the shimmers. So beware that some of these shimmers are not going to adhere to your lid. It's an ongoing problem with ColourPop with their inconsistencies. Some of their shimmers are beautiful and they adhere to the lid. Everything about their palettes are great. And then you'll get some palettes like this one where some of the shimmers, they don't give me what they need. And a big red flag for me is the green shades, which are kind of the focal point of the palette were not strong in quality. They didn't adhere to the lid. They were very, very sheer. They weren't giving. Now, it's an easy solve. Just wet your brush. Not that big of a deal at the end of the day. But I gotta pay attention to that stuff. I'm a makeup reviewer. And yeah, so it's not ColourPop's strongest palette, but um, a lot of the colors are still really, really great in this palette. And even though some of the shimmers were powdery, not all of them were. So I noticed a lot of inconsistencies across the board. I've created a couple neutral looks since my initial review. And oh my gosh, great ColourPop quality. Such a good value. Blendable mattes, buildable mattes beautiful shimmers and some not so much of a great experience but all in all this is a palette that I've been inclined to reach for. I think you have some fun summer pops that are still really wearable. It is a great value overall so while you're not getting the perfect palette I've been enjoying the colors in here. I'm a boring girl what can I say and for the most part it's been a pleasant experience with this palette and in the case that I'm using not one of the best quality colors in here if I just wet my brush all problems are solved. So I have been enjoying this palette. Not the first mega palette that I would recommend to you. I also wouldn't recommend buying this full price. ColourPop always has sales. It's definitely a much better value if you purchase it on sale, but it's a nice one. It's not bad. Okay, five and four, I don't know. Ask me on a different day, a different hour, a different minute. I might flip flop these, but for now, tentatively in this exact moment, number five is going to be the Nomad Paradise Islands palette. I think this is such a beautiful color story, arguably one of the most fun and exciting, visually pleasing palettes in this video. Almost wanted to put it at number one just because I like to look at it. I love what Nomad does with their palette. I love the inspiration behind their palettes. They travel to different places and they create palettes that are inspired by the places that they've been to and how fun and summery and cute and they keep it at a pretty decent price. You have a mirror and their color stories are always like chef's kiss. Nomad can put some colors together. This does not fall short of it. I really like this palette. I have loved the looks that I've created from it. There are a few, like if I'm getting picky here, a few of the mattes I don't love the quality of. For example, Stingray right here. I thought in some cases we're a little patchy and there's a couple other matte shades that I struggled with here. Some shimmers give me more, some shimmers give me less. <laughs> so there is a little bit of inconsistency but, but generally speaking I really enjoy this palette. I've had a lot of fun creating really colorful looks with this. Not a perfect palette. I don't think generally speaking with my experiences with Nomad Cosmetics that I have had a perfect palette from them. There's always like one or two shades that I'm like, hmm, about. But overall, I mean, it's an indie brand. The packaging is great. The color stories are great and the quality is good. I really like this palette. I do recommend it if it is a color story that speaks to you, maybe the theme speaks to you. Really fun to have. Now the other one, number four, this is the one where I'm like, not sure about between the Nomad and this one. This is the Lethal Cosmetics palette. Velvet Dusk is the name, and this is a little bit more grungy. So this is more in the type of color stories that I'm wearing more for every day. I think the Nomad Cosmetics color story is more fun and fresh and summery and yeah, fun again, but this is a little bit more up my alley in terms of like what I'm gonna wear every day in front of other human beings So that's why I put it a little higher my experience with the lethal cosmetics formula This was one of my missions for this month was to test out the lethal formula 
I really like it. Now, the shimmers are super duper great. I think they have a phenomenal shimmer formulation. Really thick. Gives you a lot of pigment and a lot of dimension on the lid. That kind of formula. The mattes are a little bit more on the soft side. They're more buildable. Sometimes they will kind of overblend in my opinion, so you have to keep building them up. That's the only weakness. I would say it's not even that bad. In fact, if you're a beginner with makeup, you might actually prefer that. It makes it easier to blend, but that's something to note here. But yeah, this is a stunning palette. Again, just like Nomad. Lethal also comes out with some of the best color stories as well and I do have a couple more palettes to test out from them that I'm excited about but overall I've had a really great experience with this palette. The color story is stunning. Let's hop on into number three and that is the Viseart's Petit Fours Lavender palette. Obviously, it's purple. It's going to be towards the top. This is the crease colors that I have on today. So I've done a look with this on the original review if you want to get some more inspiration for that. But what a beautiful palette. Now, this isn't the strongest purple palette I've ever used. Some of the mattes here are a little bit on the sheer side, but they're so easy to use that that makes up for it. And the tones themselves are really pretty. It's not a messy palette. It's not going to get all over your face. Just they're a little sheer, but you can blend them out. I love these tones. This is definitely ranking so high due to personal preference. Purple is my favorite eyeshadow color to wear, and I love Viseart. Packaging is cute. <laughs> I have no negatives really to say about this. It was a given that this was going to be towards the top. So for my makeup look today that I'm wearing, I started off with this shade right here all over the crease. This is the one shade that I'm like... <laughs> It's really, really sheer. It took a lot of building. I think it is a fabulous transition color, but yeah, took a lot of building to get there. And then I went into the shade right here a little bit deeper, so I focused that a little bit more low, and I kept it in the outer corner, and then I did blend it in a little bit more towards the inner corner. Again, used a little bit of building, took a little bit of elbow grease in that sense, but still stunning. And then the last shade that I used was the matte dark purple in my outer corner to add the depth to the look. It's not super deep of a color, but it's just enough for that springy, summery, pastel-y kind of look. So love that one. Which brings us to my second favorite palette of the month, number two. My favorite of the Petit Fours that launched, and that is Pistache. So it's funny that this one ranks so high, and then another one from this collection literally ranked rock bottom. Bottom, but that just goes to show how much a color story and how often I'm gonna reach for it is such an important factor in my rankings. But anyways, I think that this is such a pretty green palette, okay? It's not gonna give you a lot of depth, but the shimmers in here are phenomenal, I must say. And if you like pastel-y, springy, Kelly kind of greenish, I think you will really, really like this. I'm more of a purple person, but I love the tones of these greens so much, and I feel like it's a little bit more unique in my collection that this ranked a little higher. So for my look, today. I did create a semi-cut crease, nothing too serious, but you know, a little on the softer side. And I used the lighter shimmer on the inner half of my lid, and the shimmers in here are really nice. Not super metallic, super reflective, but just really dang good shimmer. Still applied really smooth to the lid, very pigmented, just enough right there, perfect. And then I used the darker green in the center of my lid, and then I did kind of go back and forth with the dark purple from the lavender palette to kind of get a little bit more of an even blend here. And that's how I got this look, but I have been loving this. Lime green, just so you know, is my color for eyeshadow this summer. You know, I love my purples, but I've been feeling the lime green shadow, and this fulfills that. Okay, friends, let's finish off with my number one most favorite palette for this month, and that is going to be, it has to be, there was no question in my mind, the Odin's Eye Soul Main 2 palette. Queen! of this entire video, okay? I don't know how Odin's Eye does it. I don't know how they create such high quality palettes at the price that they do, but once again, Odin's Eye shows up to the block and knocks everybody out. I don't know. <laughs> so first of all, I mean, Packaging is a yes, right? And then color story is even better. Odin's Eye creates some of the prettiest dimensional shimmers and the mattes are super pigmented and easy to use. I literally don't know what juju they put in this formula, but it's amazing. And I just can't get over the price given how detailed everything is with the packaging, how gorgeous and dimensional the shimmers are, which are typically expensive to make, and how the mattes have so much pigment but are still blendable and easy to use. Oh, I'm going crazy because listen to me when I say this, every launch Odin's Eye comes out with is better 
and better and better. The first time I tried their brand, I really loved what they were given, but you know, there were like pointers that I had, some things here and there that I mentioned. Now I can't say anything bad about the brand. They literally are improving. And that's also just makes me love the brand even more. So anyways, talking about the palette itself and instead of the brand, gorgeous color story. Like I said, formulas you can't go wrong with. Just everything about this palette has been so fun. I've created such fun looks with this. It's a palette that I feel the most inspired for. I've created more kind of wearable looks with the warmer side, even though it's not like the most wearable palette for me. Maybe not the one that I'm gonna reach for the most. Something really important to me is how inspired and excited do I feel to use the palette. And that is the palette of the month in terms of inspiration and just feeling excited and good about makeup, which is something that's just super duper important to me. So anyways, that is all I have for this month's palette rankings from worst to best. If you tried out any of these palettes, let me know your thoughts below. For the most part, there are a few that don't have a video, but for the most part, if you type in Morgan Turner and any of these palettes names, you'll find some sort of tutorial or dedicated review on these. I think I didn't do Apricot Me Not. Rare Beauty is coming up if it hasn't come up already. I, I think I've done a video on everything else or at least some sort of tutorial embedded, but yeah, anyways. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. As always, thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.